Today, ang topic po natin is sacred companionship, uh, belonging to one another, uh, which is a topic that is very close to my heart, which is really, uh, you know, at the core of who we are as a real-life co Christian communities. When my wife and I, together with the core group, uh, started Real Life Christian Communities or RLCC, we wanted it to really be a unique place kung saan people can experience Real Life Christian Community. Kaya yun ang naging pangalan, eh, Real Life Christian Communities, uh, which is plural, because we want to create multiple places you know, of grace kung saan ang mga tao can experience yung belonging to one another o yung sacred companionship at hindi yung parang uh, they would just go to a worship service, uh, attend lang, uuwi. But really, they would find a place where they can belong and they can be affirmed and acknowledged. At ganun din naman na magagawa nila sa ibang tao so that together we can journey no in the Christian life and experience yung uh, eternal life uh, day by day sa tulong ng ating Panginoon. That was the vision and that is still the vision up to now na we can create um, communities of faith sa iba't ibang lugar. And this pandemic uh, has allowed us to, you know, reset and reconsider how we can do that. Uh, especially, you know, pag uh, dumating na yung time that we can have, uh, you know, face-to-face -face gatherings muli, you no? Know? How would it look like and uh, what are we going to do by that time? So, as early as now, we need to be praying and asking God, Lord, how can we fulfill yung vision na yun na hindi lang yung magkaroon ng worship service, that, but rather there would be communities of faith that people can uh, go to and find a place where they are welcomed and uh, loved and, uh, you know, acknowledged as uh, as individuals, no? Uh, being saved by God, you know, by the grace of God. So, ito po yung dream ng Real Life Christian Communities. At uh, salamat po for uh, being here because uh, you are an answer to our prayers. And being here, of course, is part of the process. So, purihin ng Panginoon na wa, uh, through the influence of these daily devotions, uh, magkaroon din kayo ng, ano, ng vision and faith na maybe, you know, through you, maaari magkaroon ng community of faith sa lugar ninyo o sa kinalalagyan ninyo so that people can experience, you know, what it means to uh, live in Christ together with others. So anyway, haba na no speech ko. No? So uh, today, we are going to talk about sacred companionship uh, belonging to one another. And our scripture passage for today is Romans 12, uh, verses 3 to 5. Romans 12, verses 3 to 5. And uh, the book of Romans, of course, is uh, considered to be the magnum opus or parang greatest work of the Apostle Paul, perhaps, you know, na tingin ng mga tao because, uh, because of its uh, content. And uh, for sure, it's one of the most important uh, books in the Bible na kung meron tayong time that we should really read it, no? Now, kung nag-umpisa pa lang tayo sa Christian life, my advice is to read one of the Gospels first and maybe... Read it over and over, you know, hanggang maging, you know, parte na talaga ng buong consciousness natin. Then we can move to other books in the Bible, no? So don't read the Bible from Genesis onwards, uh, mahirapan kayo. Just, uh, if you're a young believer, a young Christian, read one of the Gospels like Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. Tapos dun lang kayo, babad lang kayo ron, no? Kahit ulit-ulitin nyo yun. But uh, once you are, you know, able to do that and medyo na, na gets you na yung pinaka mensahe ng mga Gospels, you know, then you can move on to other uh, books in the Bible. And one of them would be the Book of Romans. Now, the Book of Romans, the first uh, 11 chapters basically are about uh, the Gospel in you know, yung pinapaliwanag ni Paul, what the Gospel is, you know, in... Uh, what it implies, uh, etc. And from the from there, mula chapter 12, hanggang matapos, he basically uh, applies the gospel to real life, to our day-to-day -day life. Kaya itong chapter 12, no, na babasahin natin, is part of that section kung saan ina-apply niya na yung Christian life sa buhay ng mga tao. So let's read it. No? Romans 12 verses 3 to 5. 
For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment, in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. Amen. So tayo po manalangin. Let's pray as we open our hearts and minds to meditate on this scripture. Lord, maraming salamat po, Panginoon, for by your grace nga, Lord, you have uh, brought us together into your body. And I pray, Lord, na our minds will be renewed. All those who are listening, Panginoon, I pray na magkaroon ng renewal of heart and mind. Na pare-pareho namin maunawaan, Lord God, truly, uh, tung gift of grace na binigay mo sa amin. To be able to find a place. Uh, where our individuality can really be uh, affirmed and fulfilled in the right way. Not, not in the way of the world, Panginoon, but in the way of Christ. Kung saan, Panginoon, we can see ourselves uh, not as parang kanya-kanya kaming mga buhay, but rather belonging to one another in the body of Christ. So, Lord, mangusap po kayo, Panginoon, at uh, gamitin po ninyo ako, Heavenly Father. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and speak through me. And I pray for everyone na nakikinig that they would hear your voice, not mine. That they would understand what you are saying to their hearts. Especially as it applies sa kanilang iba't ibang sitwasyon sa buhay. So maraming salamat po. We also pray na ma-enlarge at ma-expand ang reach nitong devotional na ito. So that others may know your will and your purpose for them as well. So salamat po, Panginoon, in Jesus' name. Amen and Amen. Puri ng Panginoon. Now, uh, we've, we've been discussing po yung mga iba't ibang places of grace. Na mahalaga po, because we are physical beings, no? Tayo po ay physical beings. So, we can only be in one place at one time. Uh, now, of course, it's true na sometimes we are in a certain place, pero yung mind natin would be in another place. So, really, uh, ano ba talaga ang totoo? Are we in that place or are we in another place? But uh, the fact of the matter is that uh, as physical beings, siempre, we, uh, we go to places. And uh, dinidiscuss ko dito for several uh, weeks now. Yung places of grace. Kasi kung gusto natin lumago at gusto natin uh, talagang ma-experience yung uh, salvation na uh, nais nice ng Panginoon sa atin at matupad yung purpose niya sa life natin, we should rearrange our lives in such a way na nandun tayo sa mga places no? kung saan we can experience God's grace to transform us, to save us, to, to really work in us. Uh, and those places of grace, of course, are crucial sa ating spiritual life. I don't mean to say na we are parang just going to be in church all the time. But uh, dapat sa lifestyle natin, we must not uh, you know, allow ourselves to be neglectful dun sa mga places na yon where our souls can be nourished and um not just sustain, but uh, really uh, enriched in every way. No? So, napakahalaga that we know these places. Uh, yun nga, una kong sinabi sa inyo is the place of silence and solitude. So, such places, of course, are vital sa ating spiritual walk. Na magkaroon tayo palagi regularly ng place, you know, where we can be silent before God. You know, alisin muna lahat ng mga noise and we can be alone. Uh, detach muna tayo sa mga tao uh, and we can just be in the presence of the Lord. Napakahalaga to sa Christian life and people who do not practice this, who do not uh, regularly uh, you know, put into their schedule yung being in a place of silence and solitude uh, really suffer a lot sa kanilang 
spiritual life and they become worldly and out of focus no so you magkaroon ka ng uh, place of to be silent and to be alone in the presence of the lord is so crucial pangalawa would be yung um, sacred uh, gatherings you know and celebrations now this has to do with being with people pero hindi lang simply yung para maging spectator hindi lang para manood we don't go to church para manood. We go to church to be part and to, to participate uh, in the presence of God um, and to worship the Lord, to learn together God's Word. So, mahalaga yun na magkaroon tayo ng, ano, ng uh, place sa buhay natin na we can gather together as God's people. Kaya, for example, you know, uh, bahagi naman ng tradition yan ng Christian uh, uh, ng Christianity, now we gather once a week, pag Sunday, to be together, to worship the Lord, to learn the Word of God together. So, dapat hindi natin minimiss out yan. Kasi it's a place of grace para sa atin. And if we can have other opportunities na ganon, uh, well and good. Of course, we don't want to parang uh, fill our lives lagi with church activities na wala na tayong ibang, you know, <laughs> wala na tayong ibang ginagawa. Now, that's not the point. But uh, yung being in a place of uh, sacred gathering and celebration is an important part ng buhay. So now we transition dito sa susunod na place of grace. And I call this place, you know, soul talks or soul conversations. A place where we can talk about soul matters, you know. A place where we can go into the heart of things. And... Uh, be transparent and to share what's going on in our lives and uh, how God may be moving in our lives and hearing from each other so that we can discern ko ano ang will ni Lord at uh, ano yung dapat maging response natin. There should really be a place, no? Kung saan we can be uh, transparent and we can be um, safe. At uh, ito yung mga lugar kung saan pwede tayong mag-usap tungkol sa mga bagay na talagang mahalaga sa buhay natin no na may kinalaman sa walk natin with the Lord and so that we can also you know hear uh, from others how others perhaps may uh, be able to help us to understand para we can respond faithfully to how God is moving in our lives now unfortunately sa time uh, natin ngayon uh, it, it's hard to find a place like that you no know? Because church can easily become, uh, you know, a place lang na simply for religious gatherings and sometimes, uh, yun nga, misan nire-reklamo nga ng mga tao na misan sa church parang merong hypocrisy, merong pretensions. Hindi naman dapat mangyari yun, but nangyayari yun madalas because of the way we structure the church and sometimes the way the leaders perceive and understand what church is all about. Uh, for for many, it's just simply a place para ma-fulfill yung ating religious uh, obligations at uh, ma-bless tayo, no? Kaya maraming tao, ganun ang tingin nila sa church, you know, kailangan lang, gusto lang pumunta sa isang worship service kasi masaya. Uh, they can feel the music, they can see people, pero not really so much the way the church was intended to be. You know, as a sacred uh, gathering and a place to celebrate God uh, together, you know, and to be in community with each other. Now, uh, with that, of course, kung walang, walang ganong mindset, siyempre, it just follows na there is no, also, no, there is no place talaga also to talk about soul issues and soul matters on an individual uh, level. What a place where I can really uh, share what's going on in my life and to be able to hear from others what they think, no, and vice versa, no, to also provide a place like that for other people, so that they can uh, also find grace to uh, be able to understand kano yung nangyari sa buhay nila uh, individually. So the ministry to one another of yung tinatawag na soul talk, you know, soul conversations are so vital sa spiritual life ta kung wala tayong ganun no uh, you know we would not really be able to discern uh, 
kung ano ba yung talagang ginagawa ng Panginoon sa life natin and how are we to respond. In other words, we can become so oblivious of the presence of God na we can just live our lives na hindi natin alam kung ano yung nangyayari in the kingdom of God. And of course, that's not the will of God para sa atin. God's will is for us to be able to discern the movements of the Spirit, uh, hindi lang naman sa buhay natin, but as a church, and for us to respond to that faithfully uh, as well. So, uh, napakahalaga nito. And um, like I said, this is not easily found. You know, Most churches, parang kanya-kanya lang. And uh, people come and go, attend sila ng service, but they just go on and live their individual lives uh, unaffected and unchanged, you know. Um, tuloy pa rin sila sa dati nilang mga character traits because no one can speak into their lives. No one has the privilege nor the opportunity to be able to give feedback, no? At wala rin namang lugar where we can be honest, where we can confess, where we can uh, uh, talk about yung doubts natin and difficulties natin. So if you multiply this to every individual in a church, for example, then makikita mo na this is what weakens a church. No? Kapag yung mga tao ay hindi nagkakaroon ng ganong mga places of grace where they can just have conversations about spiritual matters sa buhay nila. And I'm not talking about, you know, having a Bible study. You know, may importansya yun. Like I said, you know, yung magba-Bible study ka. Pero usually, ang Bible study, you know, intellectual yan. You were just learning the Bible and listening to a sermon siguro. Pero it doesn't really touch the core of our being, no? Uh, it remains hidden, no? Yung who we really are and what we are becoming, nakatago yun. Nobody really knows. And uh, except siguro, pag nabalitaan na natin, uh, for example, may nangyari na sa buhay, nagkasira-sira na yung marriage, o... Uh, you know, nag-fail na sa business o yung relationship sa mga anak, nasira na o whatever catastrophe ang nangyari. Saka pa lang natin malalaman na, well, you know, ano na yung nangyari? Bakit nagkaganon, you know? Uh, because we are so uh, separated sa isa't isa that we fail to really see yung how important it is na magkaroon tayo ng belongingness to one another in the body of Christ. This has to be pursued intentionally kasi yung prevailing attitude sa mundo natin is that of uh, individualism o yung kanya-kanya. So let's, you know, just read this. Kasi uh, I believe na ang number one hindrance talaga why this is not happening is of course yung pride and individual individualism. Yung pagiging... Uh, individualistic ng mga tao. You know, they just think of themselves. And this is really the manifestation of sin sa buhay ng mga tao. In fact, ito yung resulta ng fallenness natin. We live self-centered lives. We really don't care for others or, you know, we don't want others to mess around with our lives. You no? Know? So, yung individuality and uh, rather yung ating individualism uh, yung tendency natin to think highly of ourselves is the culprit, no? Ito yung hindrance. And it's so hard to change that mindset kasi it's so pre prevalent sa mundong ito, sa society natin. Everybody's trying to uh, really uh, tell us na yun ang pinakamahalagang value. Be yourself, okay? Huwag mo hayaan pakilaman ka ng mga tao. Uh, just be uh, independent and bayaan mo sila. You just live your own life. So, yung ganong mindset is of course detrimental to the, the very nature of the church. So, let's uh, read this. Okay, verse 3. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you. Now, si Paul is speaking, the Apostle Paul, si St. Paul, na dating living a self-centered life. Pero by the grace of God, sinave siya ng Panginoon. Transform siya, uh, still being transformed, of course, nung time na sinusulat niya ito. But he came to understand, you know, that um, God was calling him to be a preacher and a teacher of the Word of God to help the Gentiles understand the will of God. So, as a, as a teacher, as a preacher, ganito sabi niya, by, For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, Do not think of yourself more highly than you ought. 
but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. Now, what is he saying dito? Sabi niya, una sa lahat, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought. Now, uh, it's uh, natural for us to, to think that, uh, you know, we don't need other people. We can just be by ourselves and for ourselves. And basically, reaction natin to, to all the hurts and pains and experience natin when we try to trust people or when we try to open ourselves sa mga tao. They have hurt us, and uh, we have experienced pain. So we come, we we come to the conclusion that uh, well, no, mas mabuti pa to keep your distance and uh, not allow others to come in. So we put up our walls and we begin to say to ourselves and to others, "I don't need you. Uh, I can be by myself." No, thank you. And so yung attitude natin, which is prideful becomes uh, the hindrance for us to experience yung tunay na community ship. No? So, sabi ni Paul, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought. So, wag kang magmalaki na as if, uh, you know, you can be all alone and uh, by yourself and you don't need others. You, know, you don't need to be connected to other people in a life-giving way. And it's true now, now maraming tao ang gano na, you know, they would... Uh, disconnect themselves to the church for whatever reason. Maybe, you know, di sila mag involve They would just go somewhere else kung saan sila magiging happy because they're just thinking about themselves. So, sabi ni Paul, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought. Pero ganito yung sabi niya, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment. Now, sober judgment, of course, uh, ibig sabihin, malinaw ang ating pag-iisip no, na naayon sa realidad. Ang opposite noon is of course kapag ikaw ay lasing or drunk kung saan hindi mo nalalaman ng mga katotohanan o mga bagay-bagay. And so sabi ni Paul, dapat magkaroon tayo ng malinaw na pagkaunawa about ourselves. Sabi niya, in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. So, in other words, God does not say na as an individual ay hindi ina-affirm ni Lord yung uniqueness mo. You know, and each of us is different. And each of us is given the grace, you know, to be who we are in our uniqueness. May purpose si Lord doon. So, the Bible does not say na, you know, parang mawala ka o ma-dissolve yung uniqueness mo at uh, ma-absorb ka na lang sa isang grupo. No, the Bible actually highlights and affirms and acknowledges uh, our uniqueness, the uniqueness of each one of us. Uh, lahat tayo iba-iba. We have gone through various experiences through life. Uh, it has affected us. It has formed us, uh, some of which uh, is good, some of which is not so good. Pero God, by His grace, sinave niya tayo and He continues to save us. So that those experiences can be redeemed and they can become useful, no? Siyempre, mga good things that have been formed in us can be redeemed, you know, for the glory of God so that it would become even better. At yung mga bagay naman na hindi magaganda can be uh, redeemed also so that out of it would come key lessons and key insights about life. So the Lord is, uh, you know, uh, saving us uh, and yung ating individuality ay not without a purpose, may purpose siya. And so in verse 4, sabi niya, For just as each of us has one body with many members, of course that's true sa atin individually, meron tayong isang katawan, pero merong iba't ibang bahagi yan. So sabi ni Paul, just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, Again, he's referring sa ating experience, di ba, sa human body natin, which of course we can affirm and acknowledge, totoo yun, iba-iba yung function ng bawat part ng body natin. And then verse 5 sabi niya, so in Christ, so ina-apply niya ngayon, so in Christ, we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. Each member belongs to all the others. And so, ang foundation para magkaroon tayo talaga ng, ano, ng soul conversations, uh, soul talks, 
is kailangan makita natin ang isa't isa as being on a journey together, you know. Yung tinatawag na sacred companionship. We are traveling the road together as fellow believers in Christ and we belong to each other. So really, ang susi for us to be able to find places of grace na ganito, you know, for us to talk about soul issues of our lives. Kailangan makita natin ang isa't isa as belonging to each other. We must uh, get rid of yung individualistic mindset na kanya-kanya tayo. And this is really a poison that uh, basically destroys the body of Christ. Pag yung mga tao, ang mindset nila is, well, buhay ko to, buhay mo yan, wag, nyo kami, wag, wag tayo magpakilamanan. And that kind of mindset, which is true siyempre sa mundo, should not be true in the church because the church is where yung ating individuality finds its true purpose. You know? Uh, you see, ang gusto kong thought na i-share sa inyo right now, this morning, or this afternoon, this evening, wherever ang time zone ninyo, is that uh, we are called to use our individuality to benefit the community. Tinawag tayo ng Panginoon so that yung ating uniqueness, no? would find its place in community. Kung saan our gifts, our you know, characteristics will find its special place. Kasi kailangan natin ang isa't isa. Rather than parang living for ourselves, we use our individuality, our uniqueness to minister to one another. And uh, napakahalaga yung idea that uh, we give space to one another. Of course, not to everyone. Uh, hindi natin kaya uh, and we are not created for, for that and we cannot do that anyway yung bang we are going to be open to everyone all at the same time ma-overwhelm ma tayo so we just choose uh, those uh, uh, people uh, in which we can have a soul conversation and there are two types you know? yung tinatawag na spiritual friend uh, or at yung tinatawag na spiritual director no? A spiritual friend would be somebody who just comes alongside us on our journey, not necessarily in a formal way na, you know, hindi sila yung nagtuturo sa atin, but someone who's willing to give us the space uh, in their lives to hear us out, to listen. And, uh, you know, they, kumbaga, they practice hospitality in a spiritual sense. You know, they invite us into, our, in the, into their lives. And uh, they are present, you know, ibig sabihin hindi sila absent-minded. They are there when we talk about the real issues ng buhay natin. And they are not the kinds of people na magbibigay ng counsel or what, but they are people who help us, who would pray with us to co-discern kung anong marahil lang nangyayari sa buhay natin uh, in the kingdom of God and, you know, and what is it that God may be doing. And how can we respond to the Lord uh, faithfully? So companions natin sila in that sense. Uh, we need people like that. And not everyone can be like that. No, not everybody can be a spiritual companion sa atin. Kasi sometimes they have so they are so full of themselves. Hindi pa nila magawa yung ano, to open their lives to other people. So may mga tao na nasa growth process pa na... It's very hard for them to be a spiritual friend to another person. So this is not something na uh, applicable sa lahat ng mga mananampalataya because uh, we are all growing, you know. Pero once we are maturing and we become, you know, we understand more and more the purpose of God, pwede tayo maging spiritual friend to another person when we are willing to give the time and the space uh, to listen and to be attentive to uh, uh, not necessarily para magturo ka because a spiritual friend no and it's not necessarily uh, a teacher or somebody na maalam sa Bible but he or she, she should know enough to be able to understand you know uh, the kingdom of God and how to live in it so may mga may certain knowledge that is uh, necessary pero at the same time, ito yung mahalagang maintindihan natin, you know, that we need spiritual friends. We need people who can, uh, you know, that we can have conversations, uh, soul talks with them 
uh, we'll talk more about yung ibang mga dynamics nito. Pero at this point, uh, gusto kong sabihin na uh, if we do not have a spiritual friend, uh, kung saan we can uh, actually share our hearts and be honest with and so forth. And vice versa, of course, we need to be a spiritual friend to that person as well. Kasi yung spiritual friendship is not parang unilateral lang na parang nagre-receive lang tayo. It's mutual. No, it's mutual. Ibig sabihin, um, spiritual friendship is when, you know, uh, two people or, you know, are able to share their lives with each other and help each other sa journey of faith nila. So, if I may say, uh, bawat isa sa atin, if we want to experience more and more of the grace of God, dapat merong place or merong lugar where we can have a conversation with a spiritual friend. And we can honestly say what's going on sa buhay natin. And of course, uh, pag sinabi natin that we are present to each other, then there's a possibility to be affected by each other. So, hindi yan parang counseling na ikaw lang nagsasalita and parang yung, yung kausap mo, nagte-take down lang ng notes. Uh, it's a personal involvement. It's a personal relationship. Uh, the other kind of companionship, of course, is a spiritual director, no? And that is, of course, more formal. Uh, that is, of course, more, uh, uh, you know, parang uh, yung taong kausap natin perhaps might be more trained like a pastor, you know, uh, to provide direction, you know. Uh, not, not so much talaga ito na parang uh, yung magde-direct yung tao sa atin. It's, it's really more of a helping us in a siguro at a higher level because that person is more trained in soul issues so uh there there, there is a place and time for us to allow na kung nasa leadership na tayo to really make time to have a, a soul talk with a spiritual director kasi a spiritual director uh, would be someone who would just be able to give a more uh, distinctive ikana uh, clarifications sa mga bagay-bagay that uh, perhaps is happening in our lives. Sometimes we are not aware of it. So, a good spiritual director may be able to identify issues or areas that we need to explore further. You know, uh, so, we'll talk more about this. Pero ang gusto ko lang sabihin right now is that uh, we are called to use our individuality to benefit uh, the community. So, we should not be individualistic sa ating mindset uh, if we want to experience uh, the purpose of God sa buhay natin dapat i-set aside natin yung pride at yung pagiging makasarili and see ourselves uh, more as a member of the body no? siyempre parang like Paul would say you know, later on we'll look at this you know, sa book of Corinthians Hindi pwede sabihin ng mata na since hindi ako tenga, bahala na kayo sa buhay niyo, no? Uh, and unfortunately, this is uh, so true nowadays. Marami mga mananampalataya still have that worldly mindset na, well, uh, basta pupunta lang ako sa church para mag-benefit ako, ma-bless ako, makinig ako ng sermon, tapos, you know, uh, bahala na kayo sa buhay niyo. Uh, Siyempre, may chit-chat ng konti, hi, hello, counting pleasantries, but otherwise there's no real life-giving connection sa isa't isa. And please let us not talk about mga deep soul issues sa buhay natin because that's too personal. So we, you know, in the church today, people have very superficial relationships with one another. They Parang social gatherings lang. A hi, hello. We know each other by face, siguro. You know, every now and then, may counting, you know, it would touch on some deep issue. Pero otherwise, we remain guarded and we put up walls sa isa isa. And so, we remain divided. Okay? And so, that's why uh, mga churches remain ineffective, you know, uh, as a group of people joined together as one. Because it's divided, parang imagine mo isang katawan ng tao na divided, you know, di nagkakaisa, siyempre magkakasakit yung tao na yun. So in the same way, the body of Christ is not meant to be parang full of people na individualistic ang mindset. 
but rather it should be a place where people more and more as time goes by by the grace of God nakikita nila ang isa't isa as belonging to each other and they see that uh, yung kanilang individuality yung uniqueness nila has a purpose and that is to enrich and to benefit the community of which they are a part of so napakahalaga po nito and how I wish uh, right now ngayon sa pandemic uh, how I wish that Christians would actually see themselves in that way. And hindi sila nag-iisa at hindi sila para sa sarili lamang nila. So we need each other and we belong to one another. And only if we can see that, siguro the church will become healthier. Kasi there will be people who, siguro because of their maturity, they are willing to give space and a place for others to find acceptance and love. You know? So, Yung mga mentors, yung mga disciples, yung mga spiritual friends uh, in the church are so vital. Kasi, siyempre, uh, sa church may iba't ibang level yan. May mga children, yun yung bata pa sa Panginoon. Merong mga nasa ikang adolescent stage na sila. And then there are those who are fathers and mothers in the faith. So, iba-ibang level tayo. Eh. But uh, at the same time, if we can just see ourselves as really belonging to each other, then we can help one another in the Lord and in the faith. Sana ma-overcome ninyo uh, by the grace of God yung mensahe ng mundong ito that basically you don't need others. You know, I hope na ma-renew yung mind ninyo that this is not true. Okay? Uh, we do need others. We are created by God to be connected in a life-giving way to other people not just to our families but most especially in the church so i pray that uh, we would see that we are called no to use our individuality to benefit the community purihin ang panginoon so tayong lahat po ay uh, manalangin let's uh, just pray and uh, we'll talk more about this in the coming days Panginoon, maraming salamat po for making us realize that uh, truly you have created us in our uniqueness as individuals, pero not to become individualistic, not to become selfish or prideful, but to see ourselves as a gift to others uh, in the same way that others are a gift to us. Nawa, Panginoon, in the church, uh, and especially lahat na nakikilig ngayon, May we see ourselves, O oh God, uh, in the right way, na magkaroon kami ng sober judgment sa sarili namin, that we cannot really be alone in living our lives uh, based sa sarili lang namin mga diskarte. But we need others to speak the truth in love sa amin because we don't always see the truth. Uh, we need one another, Lord, to give space uh, to, to each other. For us to be affirmed and to feel, Lord God, yung safety of love and acceptance. Kailangan namin yun sa isa't isa. And I pray that uh, in RLCC, marami pa ang mag-rise uh, up, Lord, ng mga tao who are not selfish, who see themselves as a gift to the body. Na I pray na magkaroon ng mas marami pang mga tao sa church, sa real-life Christian communities, na willing mag-provide ng space at ng place for soul conversations or soul talks with people. And uh, Lord, I pray na through this network of spiritual friendships as well as mga spiritual directors who know how to take care of other people's souls, na laging ko Lord na mag-grow ang church at ma-strengthen ang body of Christ as a result. Salamat po, 